Hello everyone and welcome to this Processio review video. Today I'm going to be telling you everything you're going to need to know about Processio and as usual if you do have any questions about this software please leave them in the comment section down below. I'll also be leaving a discounted link in the description of this video so that you can always get your money's worth for Processio. So Processio is essentially an automation program which you can use with no or very low amounts of code in order to create those automations. Now it's very very limitless almost almost limitless I would say um, but in a way that's really really good and as you can see we have our main dashboard page here we have everything we need down the left we have our account options in the top right and bottom left we have more tools and some get started things in case we don't need uh, or we need to know rather how to do certain things so we're going to begin with the dashboard now this basically just gives us a little bit of onboarding information quick start guides sort of how to spread the word things like that um, but not much information that we'll be able to use yet because we we need to actually make a process to begin with and I'll talk you through how to do it and we'll go ahead and firstly just begin with hitting create process. Now this will bring us to our flowchart page essentially. Now this is where you will need to know what you want to create in order to do it. Now I can do something very very simple but down the left we have different folders and in these folders are different sort of things and categories for things that we can add to our automation processes so we have these sort of overall things that you might want you can have send email get file data some delays so that it takes time for things to do join decisional so depending on what happens then a thing will happen um, and then you have your folders which include things like database documents date time all these other things that you can do and in order to add them we won't actually create something very very big but I'll show you how you would go about creating something once you know what each of the things do so if we drag send email on what this will do is allow us to simply place this wherever we want so send email we'll just put it say in the middle and then what we can do is we can add a delay so we'll need to make sure the delay will go here and these will sync up so these little dots that we have on each of the things you can sync them with specific parts so we can have the start and we can link that to delay and then the delay will go to the send email and then the send email will simply stop <clears throat> and that's all you would need to do you would hit the start button you would then run it there would be a delay of however many seconds you want so you would then configure the action in here and have the time interval for the delay send the email you can then go to send email and then configure who it's from all the people that it's going to be from and the body of text of which it will send and then your stop button Button here and there's a load of things you can also add custom actions as well so any that you've got that are completely custom made you can add them as well and then obviously looking down all of these things down the left are all the other options that you're able to utilize to create an automation then on the right we have these options here these are more sort of categorized things for example so you have process variables credentials if you want to add any of them data models webhooks if you want to add those as well schedules process instances and also process notifications um, so all of these options are obviously usable you're able to change the title of it obviously and have this all sync up with the pages that you've got <clears throat> but when you've actually finished it you can validate it um, and then you can also save it if you want to and once it's saved this will have completely done and then let's go ahead and hit validate now this will then give us any errors with what we've created so it will make sure that your thing is functional before you publish it and it won't let you publish it before it is fully working so here for example it's telling us that we essentially we don't have anyone to send it to we, we don't have a value for the delay it's just sort of the, the the thing itself it doesn't actually have a value or anything applied to it so it doesn't really know how long to stop it for and then the email it doesn't know what server it's going to it doesn't know who it's sending it to it doesn't have a subject and it doesn't have a body so really these are all the errors and then we can go ahead and fix them but we would then clear them when that's done and then you can run it and then you can get on it with all of that stuff and that's basically the process designer and it will then appear here but we also have one of these which is a ready-made one so if we click on this it will show us what one that has already been created for us will look like so your first process get weather report and as you can see you would hit start it would get the details the description the temperature precipitation wind humidity and what it feels like generate a document and then stop so basically this is something that if you want to get a weather report as it says you would be able to run it and get a weather report on the location of which we have so if we run this we can put in a city name we'll just put London very very simply and then we'll go ahead and hit run and see what the temperature temperature is like in London check instance here we go 
Um, and then when it's loaded, it will give us a document and show us what the temperature is like in that country or that city rather. Then you have your credential managers. So you have a weather API and these are all just the basically all your credential type. So anything that you're linking your automations to or think that it's gathering information to and from, things like that, you're able to add them all in here. As you can see, call API, send email, execute queries, etc. Um, and this is where you can do it. And you can create a credential simply by going here and then it will tell, ask you what type it is, what description it is and what the name of that credential is and then you can put all of that in and then we can exit the configuration once that's done you also have data models and document designers essentially if you wanted to create any of these you would go to the add data model button and then you would put the display name and the name and then go ahead and add anything in there that you wanted to and the same with the document designer as you can see if I click on this you can create individual documents and this is the one that was just created as you can see a weather report and this is the document that it will create when it shows us the weather report of that specific thing and this will basically be the template of what it will be so a weather forecast using what we had it would it, when once we put london in and we used it properly it would say weather in london today a little description and then it would give us all of this information that we have down at the bottom here um, obviously this is exactly what it would look like and you can edit this to look exactly how you want it which i think is an awesome way to set up that automation just to another level having that document designer is absolutely brilliant and i love this feature a lot and then finally you have your automation features so you can have this schedules for specific automations so you can see when the uh, when that automation will no longer run anymore the name of it the schedule name when it was last run when it will next run how often and the status of it um, you can uh, uh, create a schedule with all of that information with this button up here the same with webhooks and also the same with the api key the webhook would simply be the name the created by and then you'd ov obviously need to put the webhook url into the webhook button here to in order to actually implement it into the site but that's very very easy and self-explanatory to do and then finally Finally, you have your API key. So depending on whether you want to use this on an external area or something like that, you would authorize requests to Processio API and you can only have three active, but it would simply just give you the name and the value of that key. And then some more tools you have at the bottom, very easily, you have the ones that we looked at earlier, the action designer, the analytics. So basically how well your automation is going, um, things like that, that you might want to know about it, statistics, stuff like that. And then also your resources map as well. But apart from that, that is more or less it for Processio. So what do I think about Processio? And in all honesty, I really like it. I think the way that it, you know, handles automation is brilliant. And every day in our day-to-day -day lives, being able to do all of these things automatically is just a huge benefit. People really want that ease of access, that efficiency, and not having to do things that realistically a computer can very easily do nowadays. And this handles that really, really well. I'd say my favorite part is definitely, I made it clear, is the document designer. Being able to have those documents and simply put in the variable as little things and then it will autofill that whole document with information that it fetches from an external site and put it in there and make that a completely custom made document for the city that you chose of a location or whatever like that is absolutely phenomenal and I like it a lot. I love the fact that it has integrations with APIs and webhooks. You can simply grab it from anywhere like weather things, picture websites, things like that that you might want to use it for and re real realistically it's your mind that is the limit with this website. You can automate a lot of stuff and it would just require a little bit of thinking in order to automate something that you really want to have a think about but that is more or less it for this video thank you ever so much for watching i will uh, see you next time but until then goodbye